So my title for this morning is Treasure for Our Children. Um, so we're in our sermon series, Treasure from Treasure in Heaven, from Heaven, in Heaven, they're both good. <laughs> and this morning I get to bring a word and it's about treasure for our children. But before we start, I would just like to commit it to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your provision. I pray as always when I'm up here, God, that I may decrease all the more so that you might increase. These words are about you and what you're doing for your people and they have nothing to do with me or who I am as a speaker. I'm just a vessel for you, Father. We know that there is no river deep and no mountain too high for your love to reach us, God. We thank you for that. We pray this morning that you'll inspire us, that you'll deposit something in each of our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, first verse there, Maxi boy. We'll get straight into the word of Jesus. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Right, as you probably have noticed by now, if you've been in the room, this is our overarching theme verse for this series that we're doing called Treasure in Heaven. And we've had some awesome sermons so far from Pastor uh, Rachel and Luke. And today, I want to have a look at this from the perspective of the generations to come. As you may have noticed, that's kind of a theme when I preach. Um, it's my passion. Like, that's, that's what I'm about. Uh, next verse there, Maxi Wood. All right. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19 it says, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves and the future as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Now, I love this verse. It doesn't just talk about tithing and being good stewards of what God has provided us with financially, but it touches on my very heart for this message when it says, storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future. I believe in sowing into the future generations and that what we do on this earth will affect them, whether we like it or not. So, are we going to store up treasures that benefit them in the future and fill them with God's love and hope? Or are we going to store up treasures that end up being a trap and a snare for them and the generations to follow? It's a big question. What would qualify me to speak about treasure in heaven and warn of the trap of building up earthly treasure like money and possessions without giving it a heavenly purpose? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> As some in the room might be aware, I used to be a train driver, the big old coal trains. Now, this job paid very well, especially considering that you didn't need a degree, or you did need a certificate, but it was pretty easy to get, or really very many skills or any idea what you were doing to perform the task, as was made evident by myself being able to do it. But what a lot of people don't know is that while I framed myself doing this job as sacrificing so my family could live comfortably, it was in fact a giant vanity campaign. So it did provide a good income for my family and it helped us move towards some of our big financial goals like home ownership, but that wasn't the deep-seated reason that I was doing it. I wanted money. I wanted to earn more than my peers. My identity was tied up in the fact that I was a high-paid shift worker and I wasn't particularly interested in using the money for generosity or for good. In fact, I was pretty happy to sink it into frivolous things like online gaming, spent a lot of money on that, drinking, gambling, just throwing it away. What was I storing up during this time? Addiction, dishonesty, laziness, arrogance, selfish financial gain. I was sleeping the days away and working all night. I missed out on my family, my friends, church and life. Now please hear me. I'm not telling anyone in the room to quit their job or that having money is evil. It's absolutely not. I'm just saying that if it becomes the sole focus and purpose of our lives, we aren't storing up heavenly treasure. So in my circumstance, what did it mean to stop storing up earthly treasure and start investing in kingdom treasure? Well, 
For me, it meant cutting my wage in half so I could work Monday to Friday. It meant being present and invested in the lives of my children and wife. It meant saying yes to serving Jesus in the local church. It meant being selfless instead of selfish. It meant starting to live a countercultural life where my focus on and provision is from above, not below. I was doing my Bible in a year a couple of days ago. Surprisingly, I'm still on track and we're so far to the end of the year. I know, it could be one of my greatest achievements if I get it done before the end of the year (laughs) with Nicky Gumbel. And he said something that really stood out to me because I'm not a great reader. I normally listen to it and I love his voice. Uh, He said, having more to live with is no substitute for having more to live for. I'll say that again. Having more to live with is no substitute for having more to live for. This is what building up treasure in heaven is about. It's about having more to live for and having a God-given purpose in this earthly life. Now, for some, that can include great wealth and possessions. And if that's the case for you, awesome. This message is about what we do to leave an inheritance of heavenly treasure for our children and our children's children. Not that we should give away all our money because it's evil. God wants to provide for us. He wants us to have the desires of our hearts. But he also wants those desires to be kingdom desires to be aligned with our Christian faith and belief in Jesus. Next slide there, Max. Here we go. Stole this one from Pastor H, but she's not here, so we'll take it. Hopefully she doesn't watch back later and realise I've done it. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them, and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about clothing? Look at the lilies in the field and how they grow. They don't work or make clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? It's very uplifting and then the last bit's a little bit challenging, but that's okay. Um, If you build up heavenly treasure... God will provide your needs on earth. Now, we have a responsibility as parents and caregivers and members of the community of faith to still provide for our children's physical needs. But it should not be our sole focus. Like Jesus says in this verse, our Heavenly Father wants to care for us. He wants to provide for us. And when we are chasing after Him and fulfilling His calling in our lives, He promises to provide for us our daily needs. This is awesome news because it frees us up some of our time and resources to invest in our relationship with him and to teach our children the ways of Jesus as we have been taught them. And thus, I love that word, thus, and thus storing up treasure in heaven as an inheritance for them. Now, we are in a world where we are force-fed the idea of opulence and extravagance and status symbols whilst being in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis. This drives a message that we need more money or things to be okay, that money can be our greatest security and that the answer to our problems and the only the right amount of money, whatever that is, or the right amount of things or A big enough house or an expensive enough car or a fancy enough holiday will provide us with fulfillment. This isn't me bashing people who have worked hard for lots of money and are doing well in the business world. Some of my favourite people fall into that category. Money isn't the problem. Just like arrogance isn't the problem or lying isn't the problem or stealing or cheating or any of those things. The problem is when we have a this life mindset. When all that matters is pleasing our own human desires until we die, it limits our potential, our God-given potential, and the potential inheritance for future generations. What God wants is an eternal mindset, an attitude that says, those who are coming after me matter, and I want to give them the best chance to live a wonderful life and know their creator personally. Next slide, Max. Here we go. Matthew 6.33. 
in the NLT. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Now, you might have noticed by now there's a lot of Sermon in the Mount referencing happening. But why not? It was literally a sermon given by God to his disciples and written down. So pretty good place to start. When we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we set an example for the next generation of looking heavenward for provision and not relying on our own struggles and worries and striving and finances. So we've talked about the importance of building up treasure, why we do it, why it is so much more fulfilling and important than earthly treasure. So we better look at the nuts and bolts, the practical side of how we can do it. First boy. Yeah. All right. How do we find the treasure? Matthew 7, 7 in the NLT says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Well, well, well. Back in the Sermon of the Mount. What a surprise. That's good stuff. Keep coming back to it. But this is the first step. We ask. God is a good, good father. The best father. He wants to build up treasure in heaven and he wants to give us the tools to do it. In return, he just wants us to ask first to pray for his help in building up this treasure, in leaving a heavenly legacy, having a God-focused life. And when we ask, he listens. He provides guidance to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, through church, through brothers and sisters in Christ. But this verse doesn't just say ask, does it? No, it says keep on asking in the NLT, which is one of the reasons I love this translation. It implies consistency and tenacity and willingness to see it through. It's not just saying, all right, God, show me this treasure that I'm meant to be storing up in heaven and then going, oh, well, that's done. Back to Instagram or whatever I was doing. It's persistent. It looks like this. Lord, continue to reveal to me the treasure that I'm to store up in heaven. Thank you for what you've already shown me and please continue to reveal more to me as I walk with you, depend on you. Shift my focus away from the things of the world and onto the things that are from you. Next slide, Maxie. How do we build up the treasure? No need for a Bible verse for this step because we're going to lean on the verses we've already gone over. So the last step was to ask. The steps here are consistency and focus, or rather, consistent focus on God. Like it said in the first passage we read today, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When we treasure our relationship with God, the things he treasure start to become the things we treasure. When our heart is aligned with the heart of Jesus, then treasure building and storing becomes a byproduct of our relationship with him. We start to seek first the kingdom of God. We start trusting in the promises of God and our anxiety fades. We let God renew our hearts, which in turn leads us to generosity and humility and servanthood and reaching the marginalized and preaching the gospel to those around us. In this way, we start making regular deposits in our heavenly treasury, the bank account that can't be hacked, where our deposits get the greatest interest rate possible the multiplication and abundance of God's provision. We start to see things shift in our lives that we couldn't shift ourselves. We start to see others blessed around us in ways we could never imagine. Because like we know from the Bible and our walks with God, he takes what little we give him and multiplies it astronomically. Just like the loaves and fishes. Not quite Sermon of the Mount, but it was close. (laughs) So, When we take a Sunday afternoon to serve on youth, a potential minor inconvenience and maybe a slight headache from the excited yelling during Hamo's amazing games, (laughs) God can turn it into a life transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit, a young person saved, or 
when we give the first 10% as a tithe, he can turn it into a life-saving, earth-altering ministry for him to work through. The compound interest rate of treasure stored up in heaven is higher than any bank or loan shark or share market in the world can offer us. And as long as we are consistently focusing on Jesus, deposits keep being made. Because when we focus on him, we can't help but be transformed and renewed by his overwhelming love, kindness, and grace. So, uh, next slide, Maxi boy. Awesome. I'll get the team to come back up as I start to close. How do we leave the treasure as an inheritance? So once we've made all those deposits, our heavenly treasury is full. How do we hand it on before we leave? How do we give it to the next generation? Because once we go to be with Jesus, as far as I understand it, I could be wrong, but we'll find out one day. The money we had, the cars, the holidays, the shoes, the clothes, it can't come with us. It stays here. And if it is left behind, whilst it may cause some material comfort to our children, it will not nourish their soul. Unless, unless they have spent a lifetime watching us build heavenly treasure. Unless they have seen us live a countercultural life set apart for the cause of Jesus and his life-changing message of hope and redemption for this world. But even then, we can't force them to take the treasure, can we? It's not like we can say, here's 10 or 20 or 50 or 70 years of a life spent serving God and now it's your turn. And you better do so because I said so and I'm a parent. It doesn't sound like it's going to work, does it? So what is the final step then? It's trust. Just as we serve God as Lord of our lives and accept that His ways are higher than ours and His ruler over all, we then put this faith and belief into action. We have to commit our children to the care of their Creator. We set an example. We build the treasure. We provide an environment for them to succeed. And then we trust God that they will. Because the truth is, Whilst we build up and store and cultivate the treasure, it was never ours to give away or distribute. It is God's and His alone. So we ask Him that it be handed on to our children as an inheritance and they can continue to build for generations to come, knowing that we have no control over whether they will take up the mantle and continue to build it or not but trusting all the while that we serve an awesome God who loves our kids more than we could ever fathom and wants nothing but the best for them and that they will feel his love and develop their own personal relationship with him. And then, like us, be compelled to continue storing up this treasure in heaven. I'm a walking testimony of the love and grace and redemption of Jesus. Not through anything I earned or worked for or did in my own power, but by his blood and resurrection power. As I close today, I'd love to pray for some people in the room. The first prayer is for people who want to say yes to Jesus for the first time. For people who see that there is a different way to live to how they are living now way directed by God, who never lets us down, who want to let Jesus into their lives and live a life of partnership with God. So if we could have every eye closed and every head bowed, if that's you this morning and something's tugging on your heart and saying, I want to change the way I'm living my life, just raise your hand while no one's looking so that I can see who I'm praying for and we'll all repeat a prayer together. Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. I know you died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. Come into my life 
and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. second group of people I want to pray for something God really put on my heart as I was preparing this message it's a group of people who like me, maybe you're feeling a prompting about the kind of treasure that you are building up, you have built up you want to build up for a long time for me that was just selfish gain, I just wanted to have more money and I thought it would make me happy maybe for you you're on that journey, you've started building up treasure and you want some guidance on where, where that goes next, you want to work in partnership with God to build up this heavenly treasure. You want to say to God, I'm ready to put this earthly treasure aside and focus on you and your calling and kingdom treasure. I know from my experience, when you say that, He can do a miracle in your life. He can change it around and you can have a God-focused perspective on what that looks like. So if you're sitting here today, you're thinking, I want to start or continue or invest more in the kind of God-given legacy that is worth handing on to my children and the generations to come, then I would encourage you to, just where you're sitting, to be bold and raise your hand. I know that's me as well. I would love to pray for you guys. Jesus, we're just so grateful for who you are and what you're doing. We thank you that you give us the power to build up this treasure. And we pray, Lord, now through your Holy Spirit that you will guide us, show us the next steps for each of us individually and corporately as a church. Because we know the most important thing in this life is passing on your message. If we can do that for the next generation, God, we'll be forever grateful. We thank you for what you're doing in this church. We pray for your love and grace to guide us always, God. Speak to us, your people. Encourage us. Show us how to do this and then we'll trust you that if we follow you that it will happen in Jesus name Amen thanks Jenny